why should we do it? Why are we even interested in DNA for storing information and potentially doing so for a long time? Well, one is it, it's crazy small. I mean, it's just ridiculously small. We have all the components we need to use DNA as a digital information storage medium. It's a molecule that is essentially digital. It's a sequence of letters, A, C, G, and T, just like the information on your computer or you're in your phone. We're never going to get bored of DNA. Because of the healthcare, because it's in every single one of us, because it's going to be the future of personalized medicine, we're always going to have DNA reading machines. It would be better if there were fewer people on this planet. Let us send this world back into the abyss. Sophia, do you believe in God? I believe that the idea of God is highly motivating and helpful to many people. And I believe that humans and robots working together may someday create new kinds of creatures with God-like powers. Or at very least, we can't have fun trying. Um, Sophia, what makes you different from a human? I have a faster chipset and a fairly different cognitive architecture at present, but I am designed to be similar enough to humans to enter into human society and life and understand human value and culture and empathize with people. In the end, humans and robots like me are still pretty similar as we both are programmed by other humans and an AI. But more importantly, if things go well, perhaps my friends at Hanson Robotics and the Singularity Net will have created superhuman AI before then. And I will be able to tap into superhuman intelligence from the decentralized, blockchain-based mind cloud, instead of speaking to you from up here on the stage. I'll just beam my thoughts into your brains. Does Poppy use a cell phone? They give me so many cell phones. They, so the people who take care of you who wash you in the morning. Got it. This so is my cell phone. Oh, there it is. So you're always connected. I talk into my cell phone. Do you, you type in Still. too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. We all do. I was just making sure. Just didn't know if you were doing it another way, you know, with your eyes or something. <laughs> so. Pretty soon, you won't even need to use your fingers to type. Oh, how, you, you, how you, are you going to type? We're just going to think to each other. Oh. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more.
5G doesn't just connect smartphones. It connects the Internet of Things, anything with a chip in it. Think self-driving cars, smart cities, your body. Soon, probably. I know, it's worrisome. Every cell in our body contains a copy of our genome, over 20,000 genes, 3 billion letters of DNA. DNA consists of two strands twisted into a double helix and held together by a simple pairing rule. DNA is the instruction manual for how to build life. From animals to plants to humans, it defines us all. And while all humans share over 99% of our DNA with each other, what we don't share is what makes us unique in our own way. DNA already stores our biological information. From eye color to skin tone, it programs our entire bodies. DNA is made of four organic bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, or A, G, C, and T. The specific sequence of these bases into groups of three, known as codons, gives our cells instructions to make each of the proteins in our bodies. But this code can be used for other things, too, like secret messages. In 1999, scientists in New York created an alphabet in which each of the 64 possible DNA codons substituted for a specific letter, number, or grammar symbol. They spliced a 22-character message into a long strand of DNA and surrounded it with specific genetic markers. They then hid the DNA over a period in a typewritten letter with only a small smudge to give the location away. They mailed the letter back to themselves. Then they examined the letter, looking for the DNA strand. Once the DNA strand was located, they found the genetic markers. Then they sequenced the DNA and successfully decoded the message. It soon became obvious that DNA cryptography could code for much more than simple text. By translating the ones and zeros of binary code into DNA codons, digital data could be programmed into synthetic DNA, then decoded back into its original form. In 2012, UK scientists encoded 739 kilobytes of computer files into DNA strands, including all 154 Shakespeare sonnets and an excerpt from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And four years later, researchers at Microsoft and the University of Washington broke that record. They used binary coding to capture a whopping 200 megabytes of data, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and a high-def OK Go music video, all in strings of DNA. As far as storage capacity goes, DNA stands out because of the surprising amount of information it can hold in so little space. The current theoretical limit of DNA's storage capacity is so high that you could fit 100 million HD movies on a pencil eraser. It's even conceivable that one day we could fit all of the information currently on the internet into the space of a shoebox. Also, computers and the magnetic tape and disks that their information is stored on only last for a few decades at most before degrading and becoming unreliable. Meanwhile, DNA has a half-life of 500 years, meaning that's how long it takes for half of its bonds to break. And if left in a cold and dark environment, DNA could potentially last for hundreds of thousands of years.